Hi, Roy. Welcome to the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. It's very nice out where I am. I just came back from the gym, had some food, uh, so I'm feeling great, fired up. Good, good. We're excited to have you. Uh, I can't wait for you to share what you've been up to with the listeners and kind of give them your unique perspective on coaching and um, how that plays into how you're helping clients. So uh, without further ado, I would love for you to share what you're currently doing in the coaching space. So, you know, who do you work with for a clientele? What are uh, the main things that you're helping people achieve? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a personal trainer um, and kind of like my target audience is as men age 25 to 45 who want to transform their body, right? Most of them were athletes before, like myself, um, and then encountered some sort of injury along the way, had kids, had a job, had life happen to them. Um, so they've gained a couple pounds. Most of them want to get rid of their belly um, and then increase their strength so they can look good at the beach with their shirt off and everything like that. So that's the clientele that I help. Um, I do it online as well as in person. Um, we talk about nutrition, sleep, lifestyle changes, and pretty much everything you need to know in order to, you know, change your lifestyle and ultimately change your physique. That's great. So how did you originally get into uh, the health and wellness space? Is it something that my guess is maybe if you were an athlete, it's always been a passion, but is it something that you recently got into, you've been doing for a long time? What kind of brought you from, you know, maybe one place to, to now? Yeah, it's a great question. So like you said, it was, um, as an athlete, just naturally, I like to move, to run around, to jump. So that came natural to me. Um, but my original plan was to go to the NFL. All right? I wanted to be an NFL player. It was a way to get my family from, you know, the position we're in to a better position, right? Both financially, health-wise, and just that was like the end-all, be-all as a kid. Um, I came into high school, started playing football, and fast forward that to my senior year where I tore my ACL, right? So I had a pretty, I would say, devastating injury um, and kind of went downhill from there and slowly left, like that passion left me. And so as a human, I just needed something to give me a passion, something to fight for, and that's where I kind of found bodybuilding. It was like around 2014, it was pretty popular. Everyone was like building muscle. Um, so that's football passion was given to me and transformed into like a passion to just work out, right? Cause it was something that I can go to the gym and I can put my all into it and then see a direct result. Right. And then from that, after doing it for so long, um, having ups and downs injuries and that too, as well, I decided. And after people telling me, a lot of people telling me, I decided that, um, it was time to coach someone, right? Because you, you can be really good at something, but you won't be great at it until you can teach it to someone else. Right. And that's when I learned that I can get deeper. And I, I really wanted to know how much did I actually want to know. Right. And so I started out and I would call people at the gym that I was working at. I would have soccer moms or someone who weren't bodybuilders come in. And then I would try to teach them what I knew. But all I knew was how to bodybuild. And so none of that really worked with other clients who didn't have that same passion. A lot of people wanted to, like I said, just burn fat and build a little muscle, but no one was trying to get on stage and, and be the biggest person in the gym. And so I, that's how I started, but I definitely had to make a quick switch to learn how to apply what I've learned and take that passion. And so I could be you know, a little bit more general uh, to the general population. So started with football and then slowly trickled down to uh, being able to help other people, which helped me a ton, right? Because I was pretty one dimensional from being an athlete to being a bodybuilder. And it's, it was selfish, so to speak, because I was only thinking about myself. Um, mm -hmm. But slowly and surely, uh, after meeting people and, and, and failing and not having that much success early on, I learned that there was a lot more to the human body than just going into the gym and lifting as heaviest weights as you can. Yes. Yeah, of course. And I think it, you touch upon an interesting point, which I think any coach, regardless of what we're coaching them on. So are we coaching them to, you know, work out and transform their body? Are we coaching them how to eat better? Are we coaching them on mindset? We always learn more 
when we're providing that service to others, right? Because then you get like somebody that has something going on that you're not really, yeah, I'm not sure how to help this person. So you research it and you learn more and you figure out what works for them. And then that helps you with maybe the next person who walks, talks and things like them. And so by helping others, we actually gain more knowledge ourselves and kind of to your point of like, you didn't really have that knowledge until you started doing it. And I think for so many people, we can kind of get caught up in like, we need to know everything to start out. But Mm -hmm. oftentimes it's just in the doing that we start learning. And I think that's such an important piece for any coach, again, regardless of what they're coaching clients on to kind of keep in mind is this is almost a learn as you go process. And sure, you want to have the basics to be able to help somebody before you start. But this is an an ever learning world that we're in. And we're always kind of having some sort of teaching process um, for ourselves as we're teaching the client. Yeah, absolutely. It's huge. Uh, A lot of that uh, would stop you as becoming a coach when you don't have um, as much information as you believe you need. Um, but I heard a quote, it says, it's not what you don't have uh, that makes you unsuccessful. It's what you think you need. Right. And so mm-hmm. you think you need to have every single thing uh, known to man before you give someone information, not knowing that your experience in itself is going to be more uh, experienced than the lay person. Right. So even though, you know, I wasn't the very best personal trainer when I started. I had been to the gym. I knew how certain machines worked. I knew that you needed to drink water. I knew that you had to get steps in. And while those things might seem uh, very minuscule in the grand scheme of things, they're actually pretty big and not a lot of people know about them, right? And so I started with my family, like, hey, drink more water. Um, I told them to take more steps. I told them to get better sleep as I, you know, started to gain more knowledge. And those things that, like, like I said, us as coaches think are, everyone knows this. There's no reason why I should go out there and say this. Everyone knows this. The thing is no one knows this. And if they do know, they still need to be reminded every single day because that's just how the world works. Everyone needs a reminder every single day and that constant drive and push from someone like us. Right. And then as you do that and you start helping other people get results, those people's results will then help you become better. Because now everyone's drinking water, now everyone's taking steps, and everyone's doing what you were saying to. So how do you go next level? How do you get better? And just that momentum in general will, you know, like, it's part of the journey to continue to learn and grow. But I would say for definitely coaches listen, listening that you know more than enough, right? You, if you're listening to this podcast, right, you had to go find this podcast. Um, that means you're already one step ahead of a lot of people who are just at home watching Netflix and hanging out, you know? And it's mm-hmm. not a problem. It's just that that's not what their focus is, right? Everyone's got a job. They've got a family. They got other things that they're doing. And so the stuff that we practice every day as coaches is a service, right? And just like any other service, people will pay for your experience, no matter how big or small you may think it is. So I think that's a great point that you make. You got to start somewhere. Um, and, uh, yeah, definitely gotta start somewhere. Yes. Yeah. And we evolve as we go. Right. Um, which I think will kind of bring me to my next point. Cause I would love for you to kind of share with the listeners, maybe where you started in your kind of headspace about body transformation and what that meant maybe as like a physical visual thing and how that led you to maybe thinking of body transformation and health in a different way and how that transformation, um, uh, you know, in your own life ended up Uh, putting you into a a place of where you were sharing this with your clients and making it an important part of what you were teaching them. So could you share with us a little bit of how you went from one mindset of, you know, bodybuilding and transformation to a little bit more of that health minded uh, set? Yeah, absolutely. So that was a a massive turning point, right? Because you think every, every point in your life is a massive turning point, right? You you tear my ACL, I'm like, oh, this is it. This is the thing of my life that's going to be the biggest thing in my life. And then you get older, you're like, Oh, things continue to happen still. So I was bodybuilding and lifting weights and it was more like to just keep me going. Right. I was really down mentally after doing that because I said that was my end all be all going to the NFL. And so, uh, bodybuilding was selfishly just to keep me in, in good spirits and to, to keep me motivated and things like that. But I was doing it and learning from people who were uh, doing what's called a dirty bulk and where you just kind of eat whatever you want. Health and gut health wasn't a huge thing um, in 2012, 2014. 
it wasn't as mainstream as it is today. And so I was eating pizza, chips, pop, candy, every fast food, Western American diet that you can believe of, uh, fruity pebbles, cereal, everything. And so I would develop in size because I was eating a lot in calories, but I, I just didn't feel good at all. Right. And it wasn't noticeable because I think a lot of times we just, you know, any symptoms that we have of, you know, migraines or poor sleep or gastro, gastrointestinal distress, we just think that's a, a byproduct and it's just like what happens in life. At least that's what I thought. Um, and it was, it was my knee. It was my knee continuing to hurt after having surgery, after going through everything. That was like, something's wrong. Like, like what's going on? Like I'm working out, I'm doing, you know, what I believe I should be doing. And I'm just, my knees, I still have these like joint pains. And so it all started out like my health change and my diet change started out. Cause I thought that I was eating too much inflammatory foods. So I thought that if I changed my diet, then I would have less joint pain. Right. And that's kind of where the rabbit hole started. I went vegan for a while, but <laughs> I was not a vegan for health. I was like eating kale out of a bag, but I was still like having chips and vegan Oreo cookies. So I wasn't doing it a hundred percent the right way. And I had made a decision. I was like, you know what? I, I pretty much have done the bodybuilding thing. I went from 170 pounds in high school. I got all the way up to 240. I've kind of like checked that off the list. Right. And now I need to focus on my health. Right. Because I, I was tired of having, you know, nightmares. I was tired of having, and I, would, I didn't have any crazy life things going on. So I knew it had to be something going on with my health, right? Um, like I would get headaches or migraines. I would have poor sleep. I would have like gastrointestinal distress. After I ate, I would be easily irritable. My mood was all over the place and I just wasn't feeling the best. And so I decided to go deeper and that leads you to searching things online and, and, and just going, you know, down that rabbit hole. And I started slowly find out things about gut health. And I started slowly find things about, you know, fruits and veggies, like your grandma and your grandparents always say, eat your veggies. And you thought they were just saying it for, I'm not sure why I thought they were saying it, but it turns out it's a very uh, beneficial reason to eat your veggies. Right. And slowly over time, I started to feel better. Right. I started to sleep better. I started to, you know, just random, just randomly throughout the day, I wasn't just all of a sudden like angry. Like and I, that was like one of the biggest things. And so after I took care of myself and started getting better, I started to look at my family. Right. Because how could what I'm doing impact my family and then impact the lives of others inside of the world, especially if I'm going to be a coach and a creator, how, how can what I'm doing now impact the world? Can I go out and teach someone to, you know, gain size to transform their body, eating the standard American diet? Of course. But how would that benefit them long-term? And the answer is it wouldn't, right? It would end up causing some long-term uh, discomfort and long-term pain. Right. And so I, look at my family who isn't the healthiest, right? They, a lot of them have gone the conventional medicine route when looking for um, kind of solutions for their ailments. And it was my own struggle with that, my knee pain and my own stuff. And then my, my family, and I was like, you know what? I have to make a decision, right? Because you have to be able to still transform your body, but you can do it on a healthier diet. And when I started to learn that, it, it started to become more exciting, right? It became uh, more fun for lack of a better word. And it's because I knew what I was telling people was going to be beneficial to their life, beneficial to the mom or dad, in my case, the dad who, you know, wanted to run around and play with his kids, right? Who had some injuries and wanted to eat a less inflammatory diet, but also wanted to build muscle still, right? Because you still want to build muscle. You still want to burn fat, but you want to do it without sacrificing your health. So it started with me, my own knee pain, my own ups and downs in life, and then my family, and then how I could take that information that I learned and then help the next person. So now I feel confident when I'm telling someone, Hey, this is how you transfer your body. You want to build muscle. You want to be big. We can do that too. You want to burn fat. We can do that too. You can change the human body physically 
uh, very, very well on a solid diet, like a, a plant-based, plant-based diet. Doesn't mean you have to be vegan, but a, a, a diet full of fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds. Um, the right supplementation, you can do, do wonders. And I heard Dr. Cabral say, no matter how good in shape you think you are, and of course, me being the bodybuilder athlete, I thought I was the, in the best shape of my life. I thought I was the healthiest. Even though I was going through this stuff, I'm like, I'm pretty good. I get sick once a year. I'm pretty good. Uh, he said, even though you might feel amazing, after you do a detox, you're going to feel even better. And so that's kind of how I started with Dr. Cabral. I did my my seven day detox. And after obviously just removing all the food and, and fasting for a while and reintroducing good food, I was like, no way. <laughs> I feel amazing. And from there, it's been, it's, yeah, from there, it's been great. Okay. So yeah. Are you pain free now? Are is your joint pain and knee pain? Like you don't deal with any of that anymore? Well, a little bit. And I learned a lot, a lot of that. I reduced it dramatically. It was to a point where I couldn't really walk. And I'm like, I don't think anything's torn like that. But a lot of that actually did come from uh, physical training. So uh, as much as, or as good as anti-inflammatory diets are, it was a lot of imbalances, lack of hip mobility, um, lack of ankle mobility, uh, too much quad dominant movements, not enough hamstrings. So it was, a, it was more of a physical reason for my knee pain. But the mood swings and the poor sleep and the gastrointestinal distress, all of that was 100% diet. But the knee pain was for uh, a lot of physical activity. And so I would say if I was 30% okay then, I'm like 92% okay now. That's great. Dramatic yeah. difference. Yeah. And the, the truth is, is when you, when you start off, when you kind of get the health in a, a certain position to where that then gives you the, the transformation that then just leads you on a path, you know, going forward that you're going to continue to maintain health. But in your twenties and thirties, um, I think kind of similar to a point that you made, you can absolutely, you know, maybe eat stuff that's not great for you and still quote unquote, look good, or, you know, not eat for 24 hours and then kind of binge on whatever you want and still maintain a caloric deficit for the week that you're not putting on a ton of weight. But over time mm -hmm. that starts to catch up with you. And these are probably like the late 30, 40 year olds that you, you see with maybe young kids, or, I mean, we, if we think about more than just today, it's easy to see that as a viewpoint that we need to have for our health, right? A lot, so many people are just like, I want that instant gratification right now. I want to look good on the beach and my, vac for, you know, for my vacation in three months, like I'll do anything no matter how crazy it is. But we're all trending towards either wellness or, you know, disease. And so we want to make sure that the choices that we're making are kind of going down the proper road and not down a path that's going to lead us to places of, you know, inflammation and pain or you know, mood changes, sleep disturbances later on, because we know, as you, you know, suggested, there's ways that we can change our body that are unhealthy, but when we do it in a healthy way, I mean, there's no greater reward, right? When you not only look good, but internally things are working properly and your sleep is good and your mood is healthy. Uh, it's, that's the best in, in my opinion. Thanks. No, I, I totally agree. Yeah. So how do you relay the importance of this to your clientele? So uh, as I just mentioned, I think there's a lot of people that are just kind of like, listen, I just want the results. Like I'm not interested in, you know, doing a liver detox. I think my liver's fine. I just want to, you know, look a little better. I want my waistline to trim down. Uh, is this a big part of what you try to convey to your clientele now that it's made a difference in your life? Yeah, for sure. And I, I've learned through your questions, like, how do you uh, portray that to other people? It's just, I simply just do it. Right. I, I, I show them that I'm doing a detox. I show that I'm eating healthier. I show them that I'm doing a 12 hour overnight fast. I show them that I'm drinking water uh, because even the right information at the wrong time is the wrong information for someone. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've tried very, very hard. And for my family too, which could be kind of frustrating is when you, you have all this information, right. As a new coach, as someone who's just had a breakthrough with their own health, you're like, Oh, I got it. I'm, I'm going to go tell the world what I found. Right. Mm -hmm. And it seems like no one cares. And it's not that they don't care. It's that it's just too much too soon. My grandma told me that. She's like, your videos are just a lot. 
<laughs> they're just too much too soon. <laughs> She's like, for someone like me, old lady who just getting started, right? Maybe I just got to start drinking water, right? And maybe I just have to start moving a little bit more. And I'm like, oh, okay. So there's different levels, right? If someone's coming in and they're like 27 and they're a little bit younger, they're fresher and they have that energy and drive and they're ready, then I can give them more information. But someone like my grandmother, and although I've targeted my niece, I, I still feel like I should, I have the ability to help everyone, right? To get some knowledge to everyone. And so I, I portray that to my clients by first doing it. And that's how I get clients. I don't really get clients any other way, but them seeing me doing stuff and like, Oh, you look like the way I want to look and you're doing the things that I feel like I need to do. So teach me how to do what you're doing. Right. And so living the lifestyle is the secret is the, the hack to, um, getting people to understand, to getting clients and to portraying that message. It's not by, making 30 minute long YouTube videos of super in depth. That's for stuff like us. For coaches, we like are the super nerds and we want to sit there and learn how certain liver detox pathways and phase one and phase two. That's me at least. I, I really geek on that stuff. <laughs> but, but people who have jobs and who are, you know, full time parents and have other hobbies, they for lack of a better term, they just don't care. Right? They want to know and so instead of going, Hey, if you take this and you do a detox and you fast for two days and then give your body the right nutrients for phase one and phase two liver detoxification. Instead of saying that, I'm like, Hey, fasting is really good for you. <laughs> it's going to help you get healthier. You should look yeah. into it. Right. And then when people, when you're just like dripping information like that, and then you're long-term thinking, right. You're not like, Oh, I need this person. I need this person to, to work with me. You're like long-term thinking. Um, then it allows them to gain that natural cur curiosity. And then eventually like, Everyone that comes to me as a client, I'm like, oh, it's just it's a video I just made on Instagram. They saw that video. It was the one. And now they want to work with me. And it's never the case. Everyone that works with me, I'm like, how long have you been following me? Or what video made you come work with me? And they're like, oh, I've been following you for three years. Or I've been following you for six months. And then this person shared this video. And I was finally ready to make a decision. So I'm like, wow. So it's a constant working every single day the long-term thinking and just like living the lifestyle um, is how I do my best at portraying to my clients what they need to do to get healthy. And then how I ultimately continue to get clients moving forward. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I think something that we actually haven't talked about yet on the podcast is how you're just you documenting your own choices and your own life and that you're kind of walking the walk and talking the talk actually can build a, you know, like known trust factor or build some sort of a rapport with whoever's watching your stuff to, to kind of be like, he clearly knows what he's doing. It's working for him. He's eating X, Y, and Z and looks great. And I'm going to, you know, trust him to kind of give me the guidance and kind of being hands off and not so methodical about your business approach and, you know, doing this and making sure that you get this many likes on social media and just simply showing up and being the healthiest version of yourself and allowing that to uh, attract your clientele because you do have a um, substantial following on Instagram. And I'm sure that that's a, a platform that you use for attracting clients and just showing up there as your, you know, imperfectly perfect self doing what you love and what works for you attracts the right people to you. It's the people that you can meet them where they're at and that resonate with, with what you're teaching. A hundred percent. Yeah. And as, as coaches or, or, or influencers or however you want to, I guess on this podcast, we're, we're coaches and influencers. Um, you, you can get in your head a little bit about like, Oh, maybe what I'm doing isn't working because of those metrics and because of social media. But one thing I learned as well during this is that you would you rather have depth than width, right? So it's better to have 10 people who follow you and like your stuff, but who are really engaged, engaged every single day. They're commenting. Um, you tell them that join a Facebook group, they're joining like 10 really engaged people versus 10,000 people, you know, who follow you, but like have only, one or two people like really engaged. So going deep on the people that already follow you, that already show you love is really important, right? Cause it's like I said, 
people were following me for three years, for six months. And if I was like, oh, I'm not getting as many likes as I think I should, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to stop posting today. That could, you know, throw off that potential client who's coming in the next six months. So you, you definitely have to, you know, live your truth every single day. And I, I think telling your story too, as well, like telling the transition, like, telling people I wasn't always eating salads every day. I didn't always take a multiple. I didn't even know other than protein and creatine. I didn't even know what like supplements were and if like they really worked or anything like that. And so telling people that, yeah, I was once in your shoes. I was once the guy eating pizza, brownies, cookies, and all of that. Like, Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's how I resonate with people because the internet makes it seem like everyone's just like, they found it. They were born like this and they've got it all figured out. Right. But one of the biggest um, resonating factors for me with people is that when they tell me what like they were going through, like, there's a story They're like the facts tell and stories sell. Right. And so when you tell your story and you live your truth every single day, people like they have no choice but to like resonate with you. Right? You have no choice but to listen to what you're saying because it hits home so much. So yeah, definitely, definitely living your truth on a daily basis, right. And focusing on the people who are already here is, is going to create referrals. It's going to create, uh, that catas- that massive, uh, increase in, in the quality of people, right. You might not go from you know, a hundred followers to 10,000 followers, but you might go from a hundred followers to 110 and then like 10 new clients because the quality of the the clients coming in are very high. The referrals are very high. So uh, a hundred percent, I agree with living your truth every single day. Yeah. I mean, we're designed as human beings where empathic. We need connection. We need to feel, you know, authenticity, whether we're conscious of it or not. I think there's plenty of people that are, um, super conscious about it. And then there's people that are completely oblivious, but still crave it and need it and seek it regardless of whether they're aware of it or not. And I think that that's what, um, sometimes Instagram and social media in general can be, uh, almost, uh, it can hurt that relationship because we can, we can see that, Oh, this person looks like they're living this perfect little lifestyle and they've never had a blip in the road. Um, but to your point, if you're authentic and kind of showing your true self, it can be super relatable, super attractive. And again, once something is relatable, we automatically trust and we want to build that relationship further. And like you said, that's where then, um, you attract more, more clients, which, um, means that you're, you're able to help more people. So I think that that's a, a perfect way for explaining it. Yeah, for sure. I- yeah. So let's, um, shift focus a little bit just because, um, I'm curious given the fact that, um, we haven't had anybody in the, um, complete, you know, body transformation space as far as, you know, muscle building and how that kind of relates to, you know, nutrition and health and whatnot. Do you have, um, specific resources? I know you're a fan of Dr. Cabral's podcast. Um, but other than that, do you have specific resources that you love? Are you just kind of gathering information on Instagram? Do you have specific authors that you love? What's kind of one little potential like literature piece of maybe um, something that you've read or, or continue to use as continuing education? Yeah. So that's a great question. So I don't have like, uh, other than like Dr. Cabral and obviously when you ask me this question, I'm going to blank on everything that I know. Um, but a lot of my continuing education just comes from, from videos. Um, I like to, to stick with someone that I, I trust and, and resonate with. And, but I also like to diversify the information just to, you know, compound on what I already know. And if you're so biased into who you listen from, you, you naturally create your own bias. So I try to confirm or deny what I listen to by just simply going on the internet. So if Dr. Cabral says something on a podcast, um, I'll go to the internet and then look it up and whatever study comes up, PubMed, things like that. I, I like to read the research like that. Um, but a lot of things is experience. Um, a lot of it's experience, podcasts. I'm not a huge book reader uh, as much as I wanted to be and as many books as I have staring at me right now. Um, a lot of my information comes from podcasts and just videos. Whenever I want to know a topic, like whether it's how you know building muscle helps burn fat or 
how vitamin D can be beneficial for uh, boosting or setting a healthy levels of your immune system, I just simply just go on the internet and Google it. Um, so other than Dr. Cabral, like that, that's who I've been listening to heavy. Um, that that's off the top of my head. <laughs> all I can yeah. think about. Yeah. That, I mean, that quite honestly is my learning style too. I think if I were to kind of have to commit to sitting down and reading, you know, a book a month or getting all of my information from a book, I think I would do far less learning than I do now, but I do the exact same thing. I hear about, Oh, so-and-so is talking about this study. And I'm like, who's so-and-so and what is he saying about this study? And so I look it up and I form my own opinion, or I hear something on another podcast about somebody that's been interviewed or I'm on Instagram and, you know, somebody posts a topic about female hormones. And I'm like, I'm going to check that out. And mm -hmm. it's a way for you to get well-rounded information. And like you said, also to kind of listen to information that maybe isn't going along with your conscious stream of thought. And it's like, well, that's something different. I'm going to give that a uh, you know, thought and, you know, form your own opinion so that you're not just always, you know, reading books about the one thing that you already know a lot of, or know that, you know, that's what you agree with. It kind of allows you to expand on different topics and different viewpoints. Yeah, for sure. And so even, even to the point, like if I think I know, um, something really well, um, and there's a, there's a new video about it on like, so YouTube has been very good at, um, promoting a bunch of creators. So there's a lot of new content that pops up on YouTube that I've never seen before. I've never, but because I um, watch relatable content, they're, they're promoting a lot of stories and, and videos right now. So there'll be a video comes up and be like how I burn fat and build muscle. And I'm like, I'm an expert at that, <laughs> but I've learned that when you think, you know, it all is the moment you start to decline. Right. Because things are ever changing. And if you ever get too good to continue to learn, even if it's, even if you watch the video and it's like, yep, yep, that's exactly what I thought. It helps solidify and confirm what you already know. So uh, I make sure to never get too big headed on the things that I know, like I said, because science is forever changing, right? You, the, the science of things is to forever like prove someone else wrong about something. So you'll continue to have new information. So I, I like to, like you said, continue to go deeper on what I already know. But then if anyone, any post, no matter who it is, post something and I think it adds value, I'll go look it up. Even if it's like, oh, that's not true. At least I took the time um, to look it up because what if it was true and what if that could have impacted my business? What if that could have impacted someone's life, right? Because even if the knowledge itself isn't, you know, for me, like I, I work with men from 25 to 45 years on age, but I did get a woman client who was a referral because they worked together with um, the gentleman that I was training and I saw some information about women. I'm like, oh, and I was like, oh, I don't need to know this because I don't work with women. Then I just cut off a whole, a, an entire group of people that I can potentially help, right? Even if they don't become clients, I have women in my family. So I'm always looking to expand upon the knowledge that I have, confirm what I have for sure and set a foundation. But like I said, books, audio, video is a huge uh, learning source for me. Like when I'm just eating food, I'll just have podcasts in the background, right? Or I'll have videos playing in the background, just like constant education. Even if I only catch like one or two things, if I replay something like 10 times, I'll hear something like, oh, I didn't hear that before. Um, so that continuous education is massively important every single day. Yes. Yeah. And I think kind of what I heard you say in there, and you didn't say it quite this way, but how I took it is that even it's whatever you're listening to or learning isn't a waste of time. It's either going to teach you more, it's going to confirm what you already know, or it's going to um, confirm that it's something that maybe you don't need, you know, you, you're not in agreement with, and you're like, I don't think that's necessarily going to serve the path that I'm on. So we'll leave that. But it's never a waste of time. It's never something that's, you know, up oh, shouldn't have read that or shouldn't have listened to that. You can use right. it as some sort of a positive, no matter what, what it is. And um, I think it, that's a great way of looking at it, you, you, no matter what it is. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's never wasted time. Just like a workout. <laughs> no one ever goes to a workout and I'm like, I shouldn't have came in here and worked out. This is like the worst idea ever. <laughs> I feel like the, the, the ever said that, right. Even if you go to the gym and you don't do like 
the best workout of all time, you feel a little bit better, right? Just because you show it up, you're able to check that box. So like the, the feeling of accomplishment for humans, but also you, you did something right. And so just like information, even if you like take the time out to, to read something, like I'm not a big reader. Right. And so I'm like, Oh, I'm not going to read this because I'm not a reader. It's to be wasting my time. I go, no, I'm going to sit down, do something I'm a little bit uncomfortable with to potentially learn something new, confirm something that I already knew or to confirm something like that. I don't really believe this particular path. So I, I like the way you said that. And I 100%, there's never a waste of time for learning, like for learning. There's never, it's continued education is what it's called. Yep. Yeah, of course. Um, thanks so much for that. What, um, where can our listeners find you? So on social media, a website, give us kind of all of the places that they could learn more about what you're doing. Yeah. So really, I, I've done a little bit on, um, most platforms. Um, the biggest one is Instagram. Uh, it's just Roy's world. So R O Y S W O R L D. And then I have a YouTube channel. So those are like the, the two ways I'm looking to put a bunch of content on YouTube, just like how to's and questions. And Instagram is more of like my everyday, right? So me going to the gym, uh, me eating food or music I'm listening to, uh, is where most people can find like the day to day action. That's great. Thanks for providing that. This has been such a great interview. I really appreciate you coming on the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. I think we got a lot of new valuable information here, and um, I think the listeners really enjoyed it. So I appreciate you spending the time with us today. Yeah, I I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on here. I really hope that um, everything or anything that I could have said, even just one thing, can provide value to the people listening. Um, and just for them to get started, right? Cause you don't need to know everything to get started. You just got to get started. Yep, exactly. And usually it's just the passion that you need, right? A little bit of that fire to, to get going. Just a little bit and that'll go a long way. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Thank you so much, Roy. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and we'll be in touch soon. Absolutely. You guys have a great time. Thank you for listening. Um, and I will talk to you soon. Great. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye.